today's video we're taking a second look at a Nikkor H 50mm f2 lens, made somewhere around 1968. In the first video we fixed a damaged filter thread, sorted out dried grease in the focusing helicoid, and cleaned the optics. I'll put a link to that video on screen about now. Also in that video we attempted, somewhat unsuccessfully, to polish out some severe damage to the rear element, which left the lens more or less unusable. So now for this video I've got hold of a replacement rear element. Well actually I got another complete lens. I could have just used this new lens, but as with the original lens the optics needed cleaning and the grease in the focusing helicoid is dry, and I actually like the battered and worn look of the first lens, so that's the one I'm going to use. The first thing to do is to swap the rear element. For simplicity I'll swap the entire rear group, so I'll loosen it using the lens wrench, and then unscrew it the rest of the way by hand. And then once that's done, I'll screw in the replacement group, finally tightening it using the wrench again. I could really do with narrower blades on the wrench for this particular lens, because the flat blades catch on the outer part of the lens housing, but I'll just use the pointed end which does the job ok. So now the lens is back together we can finally get on and test to see how well it performs. I'll start off with some sharpness tests taken at all apertures. Wide open at f2 everything is reasonably sharp, although there is a kind of misty look to the image, and there's also a bit of vignetting. If I crop into the top right corner, the image doesn't look significantly softer, although I'm sure softening at the edges would be more noticeable if I was shooting full frame rather than with the two times crop of a micro four thirds camera. At f2.8 the vignetting has all but gone away, and the image is less misty than when shot at f2. By f4 the image is good and sharp in the middle, but actually now you do notice a little softening at the corners which wasn't so obvious wider open. If I crop into the top right corner again, you can see how the sharpness is falling off a little. At f5.6 the lens seems to be at its sharpest, with good coverage throughout the frame. If we crop in you can see that the letters are good and crisp. f8 is good just not quite as sharp as f5.6. And by f11 there's a little softening of the image, but the level of sharpness is consistent across the entire frame. And finally at f16 there's a little bit of softness and haziness, but it really isn't too bad at any aperture on this lens, and if we crop in a little bit you can see that it's still a perfectly usable image. The lens works well as a general walkabout lens, so long as you're not wanting to shoot wide angle of course. Details are crisp, and chromatic aberration doesn't appear to be much of a problem. It probably isn't full of bags of character like a Helios 44 too, but then you might not want that sort of character in everything you shoot. I took this next shot with the addition of a focal reducer and speed booster. This gives you an effective field of view similar to a 70mm lens when using this lens on a micro four thirds camera. There is some loss of sharpness at the edges caused by the adapter, but if I crop into the centre at 100% everything is nice and sharp. On another rare occasion that I was actually able to go out and about last year, I stumbled on this old abandoned Fordson tractor, just sitting there covered in moss and waiting to be photographed. As with all my vintage lenses, I mostly intend to use them to shoot videos, so let's crank up the relaxing music and let the video roll.
I think we can say that this lens is now restored back to its former glory. I've still got the second lens with the bad rear element of course. I might do more work on that at some point in time, but for the moment I'll just put it on one side. I think that should do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you'll get notifications when future videos are released. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.